Well, good morning. We're so glad you're able to join with us in worship this morning. We want to say happy Easter to all of you. On behalf of the whole staff, I'm Pastor George. I want to say welcome to our worship service today. It's so fun. I don't know if you remember this. Last year, we get, didn't get to worship in person, right? So I hope we're excited today to worship the Lord. It's going to be wonderful to be in His presence this morning. And uh, we're really excited this morning. I want to say a welcome to all those joining with us online as well. And uh, this morning, we're going to begin with a 2,000-year-old tradition. i got to tell you, the first Christians, what they would do, they would greet someone. They would say, Christ is risen. And the person, if they were a follower of Jesus, would say, He is risen indeed. And i got to say, in 2,000 years, a lot's changed, Right? But this hasn't changed, friends. This is so good. This hasn't changed. So I want you to know this is the central confession of all believers. It joins us with millions today proclaiming the same good news of a risen Savior. And so we join this as our center of our belief. That's why we say it. That's why it's a 2,000-year-old profession of what we believe. And so I'm going to say Christ is risen, and you're going to say he is risen indeed. And we're going to say this three times. And that's how we want to begin our service. So Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. We celebrate him. He is a good God. We're going to go ahead and stand up and let's worship the Lord this morning. Mighty triumph. 
That's why. <laughs> All right, that should do it. All right. This 
is just a reminder that he is great. We keep every day, keep in your mind telling him how great thou art. Amen. serve an amazing God. Let's pray out to him as we prepare for the message this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we just um, love to be in your presence. 
Heavenly Father, we serve a God that is real. The grave is empty. The tomb is empty. You are alive, and we celebrate our Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would speak to us, that you would move on our hearts, that you would open our eyes to you this morning. I pray that we would sense you moving here through your Holy Spirit this morning. Father, we thank you, the body of Christ, and you know who's come in with a, maybe going through a difficult season, Lord, and we just lift them up to you, and we cry out to you, Lord, would you heal, would you restore? You are our, our great physician, and we cry out to you. But Lord, I pray that you would also heal our hearts as you went to the cross, and we would surrender our lives to you. That's what we pray. And we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can be seated. Just want to encourage you, if you're newer to the church today, this is the time. If you have children who would like to go to the children's church, they can head back. They're ready to receive you, and they'll take you back to our children's wing. And they'll be released back in during our closing song. Just if you have your Bibles, go ahead and pull them out. We're going to be in Luke chapter 24 this morning. Luke chapter 24, and we're going to be diving into the scriptures. Last week, we looked at Jesus on the way to the cross, and he encountered all these people, and we said, hey, put yourself in there, and because it's so important. How we respond to Jesus is so important, right? It can separate one from in, right next to you for eternity, and so today we're going to look at Jesus post-resurrection and who he comes in contact with. We're going to see him come in contact with a couple that's just walking along the road. We're going to see him come in contact with Mary, with, with Thomas, and with, with Peter. And we're going to see their interactions with Jesus this morning. And so if you have your Bibles, we're going to dive into this passage. We're going to kind of walk through it. So Luke chapter 24. And I want you to know, Paul says that if the resurrection didn't happen then the rest of it's worthless. So today is the most important day in history, friend. The tomb is empty. Jesus Christ is risen. So we celebrate that today. And so if you come back on another Sunday, I promise you, we preach about other things. But if you come on Easter, this is the message that we are going to hear, that Jesus Christ is risen. We're going to see that in the passage today. Luke 24, verse 1. It says this, very early on, on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified, and they bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked them, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back to the tomb to tell all 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men. They didn't believe. However, Peter jumped up, and he ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. And then he went home again, wondering what had happened. And then here in verse 13, this happened on Easter. This is what happened. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. Friends, this morning, Easter, I want you to know, you guys all look great, by the way. You look great. You're all dressed up. You look wonderful this Easter morning. But I want you to know, Easter is not about us. It's not about us cleaning ourselves up and looking better and doing a little bit more and, and finding our way to God. Easter is not about what we have done. It's about what God has done for us. God has made a way, and Jesus, this is the good news, Jesus walks with us. He walks with us. And so this Easter is about what God has done. And I want you to know there is no limits. There is no limits to what Jesus will walk with you, will pursue you to turn someone away from walking the wrong direction, away from the Lord. Jesus walks with us. And we're going to see that today in this story. And I want you to know this couple you know, they were logistically walking away from Jerusalem. So they had been in Jerusalem. They had seen Jesus on the cross, and they thought, hey, things are going to look a little different now. And then they were walking away towards their home and heading home. 
And this is what it says. Jesus asks them, hey, what are you discussing in verse 17? What are you discussing so intently as you walk along? And they stopped short and they had sadness on their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened here in the last, that have happened here in the last few days. Friends, I want you to know, Jesus has a sense of humor. He just does, okay? This next verse, Jesus just got off the cross. He just got, he was, you know, pierced to the cross. He was nails driven through his wrists. I mean, thorns on his head, bleeding for us. And this is what Jesus says in verse 19. What things, what things happened? You know, the things that happened to to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel And this all happened three days ago. Friends, this couple, as they're walking away, their lives are in despair. They're discouraged. Their their frame of reference has now been completely shattered. What they had thought, what they had hoped for, what they had dreamed of, of a new day for the, the people of Israel, hadn't taken place. And now they're in despair. And they're walking home with their dreams completely shattered. Today, if you want, on the back of your bulletin, there's a place for notes. I'm going to give you just three things, three redemptive reasons that Jesus walks with us. And I pray that you see that today in your life as well. The first reason I want you to see that Jesus walks with us is that Jesus gives us hope. He gives us hope in our desperation. Did you know this, that the body physically can go 40 days without food? I'm not sure I'd recommend it. I get pretty hungry after a couple hours, but I got to tell you, 40 days. And I got to tell you also, it says we can go with three days without water and we can go eight minutes supposedly without air. You know, I I can't hold my breath underwater for two minutes, but we can go eight minutes. I got to tell you though, without hope, we can't go a moment. We won't last a moment. Uh, But hope is what helps us to move on, to, to, to walk forward in life and to have dreams, right? I got to tell you, I visited a friend of ours at the church here that's in the nursing home over at Cedars this last week. And I got to tell you, this friend of ours, uh, he was grieving. He had been in a, a nursing home. He had been in his room for a full year and rarely let out. Really, nobody was allowed to visit him, and he was discouraged. He said, oh, it was so hard. It was painful, and he was had tears in his eyes. And we talked about what we talked about last week. If you were here last week, if you remember when Jesus went to the cross, his trial, they, Herod said, ah, he's innocent. Why do you guys, this is not, Pilate said, he's innocent. I don't see anything wrong in him. Jesus knows what we go through. He knows injustice, right? He didn't get fair, you know, and that's what we like to say. Ah, it's just not fair, right? We say that an awful lot. Maybe you're walking through a season with dreams that have been dashed as well, and you say, it's just not fair. Well, i got to tell you, the good news of the gospel and the good news of the resurrection is that we can have hope in Jesus Christ, you know? And we, we, we won't necessarily be able to change our circumstances. Maybe you don't like where you're at right now, and you can't change your circumstances, but you can change who you focus on and who you look to and who our hope is in. And Jesus Christ, let me tell you, is victorious. He's victorious over those pains and those difficulties and those crushed dreams. Jesus Christ is victorious over it. And because of him, we have a living hope. I love 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1.3 says this. It says, Blessed be to God, the God of our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, according to your great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope. We have a living hope in Jesus Christ. That is good news, and it's not just this one-time thing. It began with Jesus Christ, and it continues on with each one of us as we put our trust and faith in Him. So yeah, maybe you're walking through a season where the bills have been pretty tough. Maybe you heard some news about your health, and you're just like, wait a second, this isn't good. And, And maybe you've had children that are sick this year. Friend, I want you to know... These people experience that pain and that desperation, but we have a living hope because of Jesus Christ. And this couple, this couple is sad. They're sad as they're walking along, but they they know that Jesus is about to blow their mind. Jesus is about to show up and walk alongside of them, and he's about to reveal himself to them. And maybe you're not liking where your story's at right now, and you can't change everything in your circumstances, but friend, we lose hope because we stop looking to the one who has given us hope, and that's in Jesus Christ. 
So put your eyes on him and look to him and be encouraged, the source of our hope, and he will allow you to have victory over those circumstances today. So I love this. In verse 28, continue on this passage. It says, By this time they were nearing Emmaus, and at the end of their journey, Jesus acted as if he was going to go on. But they begged him, Stay the night with us since it's getting late. So he went with them, and they sat down. And I love this. Verse 30, don't let this slip by. Verse 30 is what we just talked about here at the communion table. This is what happens. They sat down to eat. They're in the kitchen table. And this is what it says. He took the bread, and he blessed it, and then he broke it, and he gave it to them. This is a picture of what God has done through Jesus Christ for us. Jesus was broken, he was blessed, he was broken, and he was given to us. Jesus has been sacrificed for the sins of the world. So we have a living hope in Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus walks towards us. Another reason that Jesus walks towards us, and we see in this passage, is that he walks towards us to forgive, offer us forgiveness of sins. And he offers that to every one of us today. I think it's almost like this entire journey out of town, seven-mile walk towards Emmaus, was to get this couple around the kitchen table. And there around the kitchen table, Jesus reveals himself. He breaks the bread before them and transforms their lives. In the same way, we can see Jesus and the victory beyond our helplessness, beyond our sins. He forgives us today. And so I got to tell you, yeah, we're a church that talks about sin. And you're like, oh, are you one of those churches that talk about sin? Yeah, friend, because we got to tell you the truth. All right? I'm a sinner. And friend, you are as well. And if we were to say we are not sinners, then we, we would be lying, right? That's what the scripture tells us. So friends, we are sinners, but this is Jesus. And we see the blood and the sacrifice and the brokenness of the bread. And this is what happens. You can see here in verse 32, uh, verse 31, it says, Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him at this moment. And then he disappeared. Their eyes were opened. I got to tell you, I get goosebumps just hearing that. Their eyes were opened. It's like, here's what happened. Jesus was walking along with them along this road, this couple, and he's talking to them. He's explaining the scriptures to them, and, and then they don't really recognize him because a, a man would have been wearing a robe at this time, okay? And so it was a full-length robe and probably had long sleeves, and he had maybe something covering his head, and so he would have been wearing this robe, but then all of a sudden they get to the kitchen table, and they're about to take their dinner, and they're about to eat, and they take out the bread, and Jesus says, uh, he kind of rolls up his sleeves, and he blesses the bread, and he breaks it, and he says, this is my body, which is broken for you, and then their eyes are opened. Why? Because they see the blood, and they see the scars, and they see the wounds, and it's like, oh, this is Jesus. This is Jesus, and they had been holding on to this pain, and, and this is the good news, the hope of Jesus Christ. They realize that Jesus is not dead anymore, that he is coming back to life, and he is here now. And this is, for each one of us, we are a new creation. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, if you surrender your life, you are a new creation in Jesus Christ. That is good news. And I want you to know the power of God is not just to, you know, present you with forgiveness of sins, but it's also to set you free from your past. Friend, a lot of us struggle with this. A lot of us, you know what, I can believe that Jesus can forgive me, but I can't forgive myself. I know what I've done, and this is who I am, and this is who I am, and you just keep reminding yourself, and you keep keeps yourself in the cycle of pain and, and shame, and we just keep living in that. And some of you maybe, you know, recognize that Jesus has the power to overcome that, but you haven't fully recognized the power of Jesus to forgive your past. Jesus died to get you past your past and to realize that this Easter, Jesus is saying, you are completely forgiven, friend, so that you can also forgive yourself. And you may get caught up in the cycle of shame. And, and this day, this day, this Easter, that changes everything. You have the capacity to realize that that sin is now gone. It is no longer. It's not a part of who I am. And I want you to see also, that this couple, what they do in verse uh, 
35, it says the two from Emmaus, they actually go back to Jerusalem. They went seven miles, and then they hightailed it back to Jerusalem, and they said, they started telling the story of how Jesus had appeared to them and walked along the road, and how they, he rec they recognized him as he was breaking the bread. And then Jesus is standing there among them. I love this. Jesus shows up. Friend, if you've surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you have a testimony. And you get to tell that testimony of how Jesus had taken you from a brokenness and sin to new life in Jesus. And now you have a testimony. And when you tell your testimony, here's what happens. Jesus shows up. That's what he does. He shows up and he uses it in, in, in others' lives as well. Real quickly, we've seen this couple. We've seen how they responded to post-resurrection Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to look at real quickly Mary. If you have your Bibles, you're welcome to flip over. You can follow on the screen. John chapter 20. Mary was weeping. Mary was distraught, just like this couple. It said in verse 11, Mary stood weeping out in verse 20, chapter 20, verse 11. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept and stooped to look into the tomb, Mary was grieving. Okay, she was going through a tough season. Everything she had hoped for, her dreams, everything she thought was going to be true was now gone and she's dashed and she's grieving until she sees this. In John uh, 20, verse 12, it says, and she saw two angels sitting where the body of Jesus was, one at the head and one at the feet. And she said to him, woman, why? they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? They said, she said, well, they've taken my Lord away and I don't know where they've taken him. And having said this, she, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't recognize it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And supposing she thinks he's the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where he is and I'll take him. And Jesus says to her in verse 16, Mary, Mary. And at that moment, when he calls her name and says, Mary, Mary, she, her eyes are open and she sees, oh, it's Jesus. And she comes to him in Aramaic and says, Rabboni, master, teacher. And I want you to know she recognizes him and says, ah, oh, it's true. And that's what Jesus does. The hope of Jesus turns us around. It turns our lives around. And just like Mary, she then went out and testified to the goodness of God. Mary went in verse 18 and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And maybe you've been going through a difficult season. Maybe it's just been a really hard year. And you're going through a season of grief. I want you to know Jesus meets you in that time. He's calling your name today, Jim and Steve and Mary and, and Margaret. He's calling your name today, and we need to respond to Jesus. Another I want you to see real quickly is Thomas. Thomas is someone who says, you know, the whole group of disciples come to Thomas, and they say, you know what, it's true, we saw Jesus. And Thomas says, no, no, I'm not going to believe till I see it till I can put my fingers in the wounds. That's what he says in John 20, verse 25. He says, so the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord, but he said to them, Thomas says to them, unless I see his hands and the marks of the nails and place my fingers in the marks of the nails and place my hands into his side, I will never believe. Maybe you've had questions. Maybe you've had doubts. And you say, ah, you know, this Bible, you know, everyone's... It's a pretty old book. It doesn't even really connect with who we are today in our culture. Well, I'll tell you, friend, it does. It addresses all the things of our culture. It speaks pretty specifically to it. And friend, maybe you're saying, who's Jesus? Yeah, my parents believe, and they, they believe in Jesus. But you know what? For me, I don't really understand it. It doesn't really make sense to me. I don't really know if he's really raised from the grave. Would he really die for my sins? I'm just going to live my life my way. Maybe you've got some doubts this morning as well. But I want you to know Jesus can handle your doubts. He can handle your questions. And Jesus will show himself to be true. You want to pray a dangerous prayer? Ask, Jesus, will you reveal yourself to me? Jesus, will you reveal yourself to me? Friend, he will show up in your life. And that's what he does to Thomas. In verse 27, it says this. Then he said to Thomas, hey, put your fingers in here. And see my hands and put, on, put out your hands and place it in my side. Put it right here. Do not disbelieve but believe. And Thomas turns to him in verse 28, says, my Lord and my God, he believes, he puts his faith and his trust. Jesus can handle your questions and your doubts today. And the final person I want to look at real quickly is, is Peter. 
Because what the hope of Jesus does, it also, you know, turns things around, and, but it also builds us up. And we're going to see Peter be built up. Because I want you to know, right before this, right before Jesus comes and meets Peter, Peter had just denied him. He had just said, you know what, I don't know him. I'm not with him. No, no, I'm not, I'm not with him. No, I don't know them. I, he had just denied Jesus three times. And this is what Jesus does. He shows up to them post-resurrection. In John 21, verse 4, it says, As day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, and the disciples didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? And they answered, No. And he said to them, Hey, cast your nets on the other side of the boat, and you'll find some. So they cast their nets. And now they were so many, they weren't able to haul in. There was such a large quantity of fish. The disciples whom Jesus loved, therefore, said to Peter, it's the Lord. Peter, that's the Lord Jesus. And what does Peter do? He jumps out of the boat. He runs to Jesus. He swims. This. He's trying to get to Jesus. Why? Because Peter wants a second chance. Peter wants a third chance. And he had just denied him. And friend, maybe you committed your life to Jesus, surrendered your life a long time ago. But in the last couple of years, you've been kind of living your way. You've been kind of living your way and kind of doing your thing and living according to the world. I don't know them. I don't want to. Be, I'm not that serious about my faith. Friend, he calls Peter just like he calls you today. Peter sa uh, Jesus says to him uh, in verse 13, Jesus came and he took the bread again and he took the fish and he gave it to them. This is the third time that Jesus revealed himself to the disciples as he was raised from the dead. And then in thir verses 13 and 14, Jesus kind of comes to him and says, Hey, Peter, Peter, do you love me? Oh, yes, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Uh, yes, I love you, Lord. Peter, do you love me? And Peter just kind of weeps. Oh, Jesus, you know I love you. And then he says, then feed my sheep. And at the end of verse 19, Jesus says, Peter, come and follow me. And friend, maybe that's been you. You've been running from the Lord Jesus. And today's the day he's saying, come. And follow me and put your, surrender your life to the Lord Jesus. And I pray that you would understand that Jesus hasn't changed, friend. That's like we said we, we celebrate he has risen for 2,000 years. A lot of things have changed, but that hasn't changed. Just like Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's good news for you and for me. The resurrection means that the, the worst days on the worst days of our life means that it's never the last thing. We still have a hope in Jesus Christ. So where do you need hope today? Hope is a promise of God in Jesus Christ. Jesus, I want you to know, friend, died for you and for me, for the sin, for our pain. And here's what Jesus does. He takes all of the bad in our lives and he gives us all of his good. That's what he does. So today I'm asking you, live like what, for Jesus Christ. Live like it's true. Live like for what God did for you. Live for him. Because Jesus died and that was the only way. There wasn't another way. You can't clean yourself up. You can't do more to make your way to God. God made a way to us in Jesus Christ. So friend, today is the day. Get right with God. And I want to invite you. Maybe it's the first time and you're like, you feel that the, the, your heart beating, your heart racing. That's the Holy Spirit. He is working on you. And the, today is the day. Don't turn him down. Turn your life over to Jesus Christ. Surrender to him today. That's our heart's desire. And maybe it's been a while. Maybe it's like, yeah, I trusted him. But man, I have been going my way. I've been living for the world. I've been living for how I want to live. Today's the day to resurrender your life to Jesus Christ. I want to ask all of you to stand if you're able. If you can stand. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to know this is just a time between you and the Lord. It's not, you know, a lot of times our minds, we can drift. We can think about what we're having for, for lunch today or the Easter egg hunt after whatever time. But think about what Jesus went through for you and for me. That he died for our sins. And friend, I want you to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So whether it's your first time or today you just say, no, I have been drifting away. I, I'm ready to re-surrender my life. I want you, just between you and the Lord, raise your hand that you're ready to receive Jesus Christ. Raise your hand, friend. I see that. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Claim him. The Lord Jesus loves you. He died for you. Amen. You can put your hands down. If that is true for you today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. 
Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. And Lord Jesus, I know that you died. You went to the cross for me. You died for my sins. Lord Jesus, I put my faith and my trust in you. I surrender my life to you. Thank you that now I get to experience the goodness of eternal life with you in heaven where our Savior Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Lord, we want to now ask that the Holy Spirit would come and empower us to understand your scriptures and to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May you, let's give the Lord a hand this morning. We praise him for his good, great God. He is good and he is risen. Let's continue to worship him as we close.
Uh, real quick, I just want to let you know, um, if you have kids in the nursery, you can go grab them. And we're going to be filtering out. You can go out both of these doors right behind the building if you have kids uh, below grade school age. There's a whole section right back here for them. And then everyone, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade, can kind of line up inside the walls here and you'll hear a siren. Uh, they'll, they'll be over here. There's a huge field of thousands and thousands of eggs. And so uh, we'll send you home with a little candy today and wire you up and hope you have a wonderful day as well. I also want to let you know, if you trusted the Lord Jesus as your Savior today, we have a Bible for you. We, we don't leave here without getting a Bible. We've got Bibles at the Welcome Center. We'd love to give you that today. We'd also love to touch base with you and help you grow in your walk. Hear the benediction as we close the surface. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week. Happy Easter. Amen.